My child, why do you fret and worry? Why are you concerned with the circumstances around you? <clears throat> why is there a feeling of hopelessness in you right now? A feeling that life is too much for you. That it is too difficult to cope with the situa situations around you. Yes, I know how you feel in this moment. It seems that as soon as you conquer one set of circumstances and get those working right, another set of circumstances arise that has to be conquered. In yourself, sometimes you feel like giving up. You cry out to me, why me, Lord, why me? Child, it's not you who are being fought. <clears throat> it's me and you. It's not your plans that are being rejected. It's your fulfillment of my plans that are being rejected. It isn't you that the world wants to hold back and smother. It is the life and light and love of God that shines from you that the world is trying to quench. <clears throat> when you understand that, you will no longer be moved by the circumstances around you. When you get a hold of the fact that circumstances are to be overcome in me, you will keep your eyes on me. You have heard lots of people say that the way to survive in this world is to live by the saying, don't sweat the small stuff. That's good advice, and now I say to you, child, that is all small stuff, because my word says nothing is too difficult for me. Look around at the thousands of living creatures I have created. Every one of these depend on me for their daily food. All they have to do is gather it. Child, the birds have no concern as to where their food will come from. So it shall be with you, child. Day in and day out, year in and year out, circumstances will come rushing towards you in one way or another. But you are my child, and circumstances in the world are not to dominate you. <clears throat> Therefore, take your authority to set the boundary. Rise up and resist him in Jesus' name. Tell Satan that is enough. You can't have my family. You can't invade my home. My life is off limits to you. My family is off limits to you. I am proud of you and I love you. Love your Father God. My child, your problem is that you feel like you are not praying perfect prayers. And because of that, you feel you are wrong. You are right. You are not praying perfect prayers because you are not perfect. That is why you have Jesus as an intercessor. When you pray, he intercepts your prayers, removes what needs to be removed, and adds what needs to be added to make them complete. By the time I hear your prayers, they are perfect. Prayers prayed by a perfect person, love Father God. I want to know me I want you to know me as bridegroom. I have revealed myself as the desire of nations, Lamb of God, Savior, Son of the Most High, Redeemer, Prophet, Teacher, Shepherd, Protector, Provider, Physician, Advocate, Deliverer, Lord and King. And you have experienced my grace in these ways, but now I want you to know me as your bridegroom, for you are the people of my betrothed earth. I've entered a covenant with you that will not be broken. I've paid the price of the diary, and you are my beloved. Receive me as your loyal friend, constant companion, intimate lover, and eternal husband. I tell you honestly, the day is at hand that I will come for my bride and prepare. My precious child, I have surrendered you with protection. I have surrounded you with protection, like a mother bird protects her young. I have raised you from your time of infancy in my nest, and I have fed you. You have watched me come and go, uh, but would fly away and come again, and you have enjoyed sweet fellowship with me. 
The time has come that I would teach you to fly, that you no longer be bound to the nest. You rise up with wind beneath your wings and fly with me to experience what you've only been able to observe from your place of safety. There is greater risk in leaving the nest, but there is also greater benefit. I would show you things and use you in ways you never thought possible. This time my fledglings to soar with me. You say, how will I do this? I will coach you and teach you. All I require of you is that you be yielded and willing. I will accomplish this in you. Watch, I'm about to do a new thing with you, our Father God. Dear child of mine, never feel overwhelmed. You are small, but I am big. You are weak, but I am strong. The strength of a daddy, a dear loving daddy, is yours, my child. Yes, I'm not just father, I am daddy. People don't understand this because they have not the child heart that I long for them to have. But my people, great and small, young and old, they all need a daddy to run to, a lap to climb onto, a shoulder to cry on, a chest to borrow into. Is this not the only comfort, the only answer when life gets tough? Just hide yourself in me. Love your father and daddy God. Dear child, listen to me. I have upheld you since you were conceived and have carried you since your birth. Even to your old age and gray hairs, I'm he. I'm he who will sustain you. I made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. Love, Father God. Isaiah 46, 3 through 4. My child, sometimes the pain you feel seems to cuff you like a shroud. Someday it cuts you like an icy wind. Some days the sound of your solitude blocks out the normal sounds of the day. The breeze in the trees, the bird song, the rain. My child, I'm asking you to listen within your heart. Listen intently and you will hear a song. It's the song of the Lord your God. It's the song I am singing over you. You are my beloved one, and in you I find reason to rejoice. Don't you see? Don't you understand yet? You are not alone, for I am with you. I am the mighty one, whose hand is swift to save. I am the arms of love in which you will find welcome and rest. <coughs> I am the quilt, inner music that sings in your spirit, the song of joy that is healing your broken heart. And even on those days when you feel alone and you cannot hear my music, please know, my child, that I am here. I love you and rejoice over you, God. The Lord your God is with you. The Mighty One will save you. He will rejoice over you. He will rest in His love. He will sing and be joyful all about you. Zephaniah 3.17 The blood is what pleases me, said the Lord. Yes, the precious blood that flowed from Calvary, from the nail-pierced hands and feet of my son, Jesus Christ. He poured forth from his side and dripped from his brow. And yes, the stripes that he bore on his back were for you, for your healing. Let the blood cover you. Let it cover you from head to toe. Does it seem repulsive to you that you should stand and walk and live covered in blood? Well, but if you aren't, I cannot look at you. You cannot come to me, for you are stained with sin, and even the garment tainted by the flesh I hate. But the blood is that which makes you worthy. Not by works of righteousness which you have done are you fit to stand in my presence, but only because of what Jesus Christ has done for you. By the shedding of his blood do I accept you. That's what is pleasing to me, said the Lord, that you are mine and that you are surrounded to me. Surrender to me because you have accepted that which I require. You have not counted insignificant that which was done for you. But you know that through Jesus is the only way you can come to the Father, the only way you can enter the Holy of Holies. Only the blood is the blood I accept and nothing else. Oh, don't you see how serious it is when you come to me with your own works? I refuse to come to me because you feel unworthy. Why do you feel unworthy? 
It's because you are trying to enter by the flesh. You are if the blood does not cover you, but only through the blood and not of yourselves will be righteous. Do not displease me by coming with anything else. Is that which that you pray, and through it you have everlasting life now, and forever stay for the Lord. Isaiah 53, 5, Romans 5, 6 through 11, Romans 5, 21, Romans 8, 8, Hebrews 10, 5, Hebrews 10, 29. Words from the Lord to Joyce Myers. Yes, my children, I have a plan for your life, and it includes many, many blessings and many great things. And you have been wondering, why am I not blessed? And I say unto you, there are things in your life that need to be cut off. There are things I have been dealing with you about, but you have been dragging your feet and not obeying me. You've been trying to find another way, a way where you can have my blessings and walk in the flesh. I say unto you, now nah, it shall not come to pass that way. Reverend me, honor me, obey me, yes, even fall upon your face before me in, in reverence, for I am a holy God, and I do desire to work holiness in you. I will reward you openly if you will obey me secretly in the hidden realms of your heart. Don't fight me any longer. Let me have full reign. Let me have the reins. Let me lead, guide, and direct you. Let me have full reign in your life. I have a plan, and I desire to bring it to pass, and you will not be sorry. You, you will not be sorry, but if you continually resist me, then you will be grieving all the days of your life, because your inner man will know that you have missed my best for you. Have you not noticed how I have ordained the seasons? Each season comes and goes, and each one brings change. The spring brings forth freshness and an array of glorious new color, along with a spark, sprinkling of showers. The summer comes and its heat melts the coldest of hearts. The fall brings in a dazzling array of dynamite change. The winter brings the brightness of snow. How I wish that all my children would open their eyes to the splendor I have created just for them. Open your eyes, children. Look and see what your Lord has made is good. Not even the buzzing bee goes hungry, and still I bring shade to the sparrow. Look how glorious the ocean sings. Why, even the mountains stand up in majesty and splendor. Even the mountains stand and look in awe of all I have created. All this glory was created for my children. I love each and every one of them. Not one of my children, not one of my children I have created the same. Each of you are unique. There is none other like you. If my children who are called by my name seek my face, I shall heal their land. I have summoned my angels to lift up each and every one of you. For they that abide in me, I shall abide in them. Nothing you could ever do can make me love you any less. For I delight in you. As you rise up in anthem of praise and worship, it is but incense on my altar. Sometimes, sometimes can you slow down and spend a little more time with me? My heart races for the next moment we spend together. I long to pick you up and place you on my lap as a little child and have you whisper in my ear your innermost thoughts and fears. If you would only keep your eyes on me and not on the world in times of trouble. Many times the enemy has tried to take you away from my son. I have allowed the trials to strengthen you, but never, I say never, will I let you go. Just pray for those I lay on your hearts, my dear children. Israel your leader, the downhearted and the broken hearted. Throughout the years, the canker worms and locusts have come and taken some of your joy and peace away. The enemy has even planted seeds.
the doubt as to your salvation. This line accusations of past sin. I have redeemed you for, 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 for my son. You are a new creation. You are born again. Believe what I say, not the father of lies. Each time you have cried, I have caught each precious tear and cupped it in my hands. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Do not let the enemy of your souls weaken you. I have given you everything that you need to fight. Don't go by your feelings, for they are carnal, and this can be used to blind you. Depend only on me. I am doing something in you that is so glorious. Watch me, my child, for I am about to do something that not even the humans might will not be able to comprehend. I have been polishing all those rough diamonds, doing it with such love and patience. When the diamonds is grounded and polished, it will show all my glory for the world to see. You are my chosen vessels with the will. James Donovan, bring a newness of life. I shall spring up a fountain from within, a river of refreshing that is washing away and removing everything that is hindering my presence and blessing. My river is removing long jams of bitterness, unforgiveness, anger, resentment. I am bringing newness of life and transforming minds to a mind after me. My children are walking in my love, my forgiveness, my power, my authority. Standing on my promises. They are receivers and releasers of my newness of life. I have great plans for you who hearken to my voice and surrender yourself in submission to my spirit. For those walking in obedience, led of my spirit, med meditating on my word and living my truth. My word is like a sword, destroying and cutting away all the hindrances and breaking the chains of bondage that hold you back. I'm bringing newness of life in this season. I'm bringing growth and maturity for you to be my condolence, releasing newness of life. Seek me, press into me, submit to my spirit who leads and draws you into all truth. Be rooted in my word, be renewed by my spirit, and allow my word to sink in. To wash and to renew your mind, transforming you into my likeness, walking in my life. My spirit is moving in this season, bringing about change and strengthening my people to overcome the hindrances of yesterday and be victorious in me. They are bringing honor, they are submit to me, their Heavenly Father. They are walking after me. Allow my spirit to flow and transform lives as you press into me. Receive my righteousness, peace, and joy as you allow my spirit to reign in your life. I am bringing about much change in newness of life. As you yield and allow my spirit to move and to bring transformation in newness of life, then you shall be a living testimony of my goodness in your life. For in me you shall be endowed with power and, sh and share with many my light and the power of my spirit and authority, bring in change and giving me all the glory and praise. So praise, so rise and walk in newness of life.